Hi guys, today we're going to talk about utility behavior trees. Uh, and this was first suggested by Bill Merrill in this book chapter from 2013. To see why we need utility behavior trees, we're going to look at this simple example. So we have some warrior guy fighting a dragon here. So we have this simple behavior tree. If health is low, we're going to retreat. If the enemy is far away, we're going to use our longbow. It's not visible in this image, but we imagine we have a longbow. And if the enemy is close, we're going to use a sword to fight him. Okay, so what's the problem with this? Well, one observation about behavior trees in general is that the or <coughs> order of siblings in a behavior tree, so the, the order of these subtrees in this example, um, is important and it's also static, it's fixed. So this is the leftmost child, this is the middle, and this is the rightmost child, and this is the ticking order. And it's very important for how this guy executes. Uh, and the thing with utility behavior trees, it's someone noted, maybe it was Bill, maybe it was someone else, I don't know, that sometimes we would like to reorder this. The ordering makes sense in some situations, in other situations you might want to have a different ordering. So, so the question is, can we change the order on the fly? Uh, and utility behavior trees do exactly that. Uh, it works for fallbacks most of the time, because fallbacks are things that you do to kind of achieve the same thing, to so achieve a good outcome of this battle in this case. Uh, and it also works for sequences in, in some instances, and we're going to look at both of these. So what are the drawbacks of having a fixed order of the chi children, as in this example? Well, <clears throat> Uh, if the health is low, we're going to retreat, but what if the enemy has even lower health? What is it if the dragon is almost dead? Uh, does it make sense then to retreat if our health is low? Or would it make more sense to keep fighting until the enemy is dead? Possibly. So what if you have your back against the wall over here? Uh, does it make sense to retreat if you cannot retreat? Well, you might argue that retreat, retreat should return failure in that case, but, but if it doesn't, uh, you would want another order. Uh, if the enemy has no long-range weapons, uh, it might make sense to do some kind of kiting tactics to kind of retreat and then use your longbow and retreat and use your longbow and so on. Uh, and it's not captured by this, um, this static ordering. Uh, and what if, obviously, you can con construct many cases where it would make sense to do something in particular that is perhaps not captured by, by a static ordering like this. So then we would like to reorder and then we can use this utility uh, concept for doing that. So let's, let's imagine what if we could just measure the utility of each option. Like in a given situation, what is the utility of retreating? That is how useful it is. And what is the utility of using the longbow? And what is the utility of using the sword? And then we just choose the best option. So this is, this is a, a good idea, but it's some, sometimes it also kind of hides parts of the complexity. Obviously, if we can measure uh, the utility of all our options, the optimal options is, is to do the most useful thing. Uh, and then the whole problem is just uh, hidden under this utility thing. How how useful is an actual act, action actually? Uh, but but we can have some some fairly flexible uh, and useful designs using this. So we're gonna look into the details. Uh, so basically, yes, if we could measure the utility, we just remove the the kind of the pre the conditions here, the preconditions for these actions. Uh, and then we, we, we take some kind of uh, feedback values. The utility value from this subtree is kind of fed back until, and now this is a utility uh, fallback action. So, so we, we, co we uh, communicate some kind of utility value back up from the three subtrees. Uh, and then this guy, uh, depending on this, this guy basically resorts the children constantly depending on the utility value. So you tick the, the most useful action first, uh, no matter what situation you are in. So that's a utility fallback, basically.
So this, this is the core ID, which is simple and complex at the same time. Because utility can be simple and it can also be immensely complex to decide what action is the most useful one. Yeah. So utility. Uh, what is the utility of an action? That is kind of the key question uh, when doing utility BTs and doing utility theory in general. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna pause this kind of fighting the dragon example for for for, for a little uh, for a little while and look at a simpler go shopping example where we can look at some some generic uh, IDs. So utility, you might think that fast is good. So if if this guy, let's forget about the sword here. This guy is going shopping and he has three shops to to choose between. And maybe you want to go to the shop, the closest shop, where, where you can shop uh, in the least amount of time. So one, maybe one over completion time is utility. So the smallest completion time is going to give the highest utility. Uh, maybe in another situation, cheap is good. You want to go to the store where you can buy whatever you need for the lowest cost. So maybe... Uh, then maybe store C is really cheap, but you have to, to uh, drive a bit further to get there. So, so maybe this is the best utility if you're low on, on cash. Or success is good. You wanna, the utility is, is the uh, success probability of shopping. Maybe you want some kind of very rare Brazilian tomatoes or something. Then you would want to go to the store where the chance of finding those tomatoes is, is the highest. Yeah, or, uh, well, I mean, you, you could have success in other means. Maybe a, store A and C are closed, so, so the, the success probability depends on, on opening hours or something. Uh, or reward is good. I mean, uh, we notice that utility is kind of a general concept of something that is good. Uh, a related concept is the reward. Uh, uh, if you looked at uh, reinforcement learning, we have uh, if we have a reward signal, then we want might want to uh, maximize the reward signal over time, and then we can we can see that as a utility as well, or something else that is reasonable. Uh, a thing with utility theories, you can kind of cook up something reasonable fairly fairly fast. Uh, so you can just pull something out of your sleeve here and say, this is my utility. This is how I'm gonna my agent is going to work basically but then you don't have all that much structure so so if you want to go with the option of success is good then this there's a, a paper by Hannah Ford in 2016 that looks at success probabilities and um, so they have this simple idea of just keeping track of attempts and successful attempts and then you can estimate the success probability as, as this fraction of successful attempts uh, over the actual ex all, all the attempts and then you can possibly condition this on sensor data so if you just keep track on how many you tried how many times you tried shopping at, at store b uh, and then how many of those that were a success you have some kind of um, estimate of the success probability of shopping at store b and then you keep track of the same thing for the other stores for the other actions here and then you can you get utilities for these different guys in terms of success probability. Uh, either you just keep track of this in general, or you condition it on sensor data. If I want those Brazilian tomatoes, maybe I have a higher success rate at store B. But if I just want to want a gallon of milk, uh, store C has longer opening hours, so I have a higher success probability there, or something like that. So we noticed that reward is good. So, so the question, what is the utility of an action? If we have access to a reward, uh, uh, we can just look at the reinforcement learning perspective and use expected accumulated future reward as a function. Uh, so we basically solve an RL problem with these three actions, and uh, then we get the Q value uh, so the Q value giving a state and an action is expected future sum of rewards uh, with taking the discount factor gamma into account uh, given that you are in a state and you're choosing action A right now. Uh, 
and then follow the policy pi. So, so if the policy pi is optimal policy, then for just uh, this uh, state, choosing the action uh, A would give this future accumulated reward. And then we can just call this the utility of picking that action. And then if we do utility BTs here, we actually do the optimal action giving reinforcement learning. So that's obviously very good, but we also have to solve this reinforcement learning problem. And then it's kind of a borderline if we're really doing utility BTs or if we're actually doing reinforcement learning here. Uh, but either way, if we, if we can solve this problem, we're gonna have an optimal uh, decision strategy. So that's good. Uh, or we can solve a Monte Carlo tree search problem uh, starting from each action here and then do Monte Carlo tree search, which is related to reinforcement learning. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that's not a problem, but that's another option to kind of uh, get the utility for, for the first pick of actions or do something else. So uh, we want to do, imagine we want to do utility BTs. Then we have this, we talked about this low level thing. We have, we have some actions and we want to pick the best action in this uh, utility fallback. So one of the benefits obviously of behavior trees is modularity and subtrees and so on. So uh, a very reasonable question to ask here is can we aggregate utility up the behavior tree? So if this is our kind of the, the smallest subtree here, then we connect this to, to, to this uh, utility sequence. So the question is, if, if we know what the utilities are down here, what is the utility of this subtree? Uh, and what is the utility of these two subtrees and so on? Uh, and if, if for some, uh, some choices of utility, we can, we can make reasonable uh, rules for aggregating utilities and for the others it's, it's more unclear. So if for instance if we have cost here, the cost of going to shop at store 1 and the cost of shopping at store C and the cost of eating, uh, then the fallback, uh, the utility of this subtree would be the, uh, the smallest value since we're kind of choosing uh, the best utility that is the cheapest version then this subtree, the cost of this whole subtree would be the cost of, of going to the cheapest because that's what we're going to do. Uh, and then for, for, for a sequence, basically first we need to shop and then we need to eat and the cost of doing that in sequence, we need to do both. So that's kind of the sum of the utility coming from this subtree and the utility coming from here. Uh, you can also imagine uh, time. Time is, well, or one over time is your utility. Uh, yeah. So then uh, for the fallback, the time taking, uh, uh, the overall time here would be the, the, the smallest time. And remember actually, so if the utility is one over time, you need to compute, you need to invert it back to time and then take the smallest time and so on. And here it's, it's obviously the time of shopping and eating is the sum of whatever 20 minutes and half an hour or something. And then you need to convert it back to time and then invert it to utility to find the cheapest and so on. Uh, if we're looking at success probability, we can also do, do a rational computation. So for a sequence, uh, we need to succeed here and we want to succeed there. So then the, 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 uh, the probability of succeeding with the whole sequence is going to be the product of, the, of those probabilities. Uh, whereas if we have a fallback, it's enough to succeed at one. So when, what we want to avoid is failing all three. So failing all three would be one minus the probability of success and then multiplying that together. And then one, this is the probability of failing everything. And that the inverse of that is going to be the probability of at least succeeding once, and that's the, the kind of probability uh, going up here. here. <clears throat> if we have rewards down here, uh, then I guess it's, it's a bit more unclear how to uh, aggregate this over the tree, because uh, the reward here would be the, the expected accumulated future reward of just having these three actions to choose from. But now all of a sudden we're gonna do that for some time and then we're gonna go eat instead. And then it's a bit unclear how this utility that comes up here from eating 
until uh, the end of, of uh, the universe, uh, how that is to be, supposed to be combined with with, uh, with the rest of the VT. Uh, since RL assumes kind of running forever in, in the basic case, at least. And then in the cases where it doesn't, you need to pick a horizon. Uh, and then I guess it, it's unclear again. But possibly doing something as above makes sense. So uh, we talked about backward chaining in some earlier videos. So how does that combine with utility theory? And remember backward chaining, you started with some top level goals like this, and then you have a subtree that achieved a, a given goal uh, by, by doing some other actions. And then you kind of change, you replace the check for a sub, sorry, for a condition by a subtree achieving that condition. And then you did that recursively. So how does utility come into play here if you want it to come into play? Well, basically, uh, if we're achieving this x here, we can do it either by doing fix x by doing y or fix x by doing z here. Obviously, the order of these two is more or less arbitrary, so we can use utility uh, to, to reorder uh, subtrees like this as long as they will achieve x. Uh, we could possibly also reorder things here. So here it's actually, this was a fallback uh, under the sequence here. This is the different preconditions of doing x, uh, fix x by doing z. Uh, sometimes we can reorder preconditions. So imagine uh, we want to set the table here and then the preconditions might be that we need to, to grasp a fork, we need to grasp a spoon and then we have a fork and a spoon then we can set the table. And then the order actually of, of getting hold of these uh, different pieces of cutlery, uh, it doesn't matter if you first get a hold of the fork and then get a hold of the spoon or the other way around. If you have both, you can, you can set the table. So, so here you can actually reorder, but in some cases uh, you cannot. So, so uh, let's look at this uh, backward chain example from an earlier video there's lots of complexity here we're not going to go into details but you can see that this is an example of uh, of children of a fallback uh, like up here here you can reorder uh, do we place object at goal ourselves or do we ask another agent to do it for us the order here can be changed based on some utility if there's lots of other agents around it's maybe uh, cheaper or more efficient to ask them to do it than do it ourselves. Uh, then we also have this case where we have preconditions like here. We're going to place object at goal and the preconditions is we need to have the object in the gripper and we need to be close to the goal. If we reorder these based on utility, uh, it might work uh, very poorly because what if we get close to the goal first and then we try to, to make sure we have the object in the gripper. Maybe the object is far away. Then, then we can't be remain close to the goal and get a hold of the object. So it makes sense to get the object first and then get close to the goal in order to put it at the goal. So in this case, you can't really reorder this based on some utility because it's not going to work. Yes. So uh, we talked about utility BTs, piping up the utility here, value here basically means you need to change your, your BT engine uh, for, for doing these utility computations and reordering. So, so uh, but there is, if you don't want to do that, you, you can think of utility BTs as kind of a design principle and then run normal BTs. So you can actually convert the utility BT to standard one. Um, in some sense, if you do as follows, well, if, if this is how it works, you can just, you note that whatever has the highest utility here is gonna run. Uh, so by choosing conditions here, we can create an equivalent BT, at least as long as the, the all the actions return running all the time. Uh, so it's possibly less transparent and, and Possibly it's going to be a bit difficult for, for, for many levels of subtrees, but if you basically just do this replacement, instead of checking here if we have low health, we can just check uh, this should, in a utility BT, this guy should run if this has the highest utilities. And then you can just, in this condition, check if the utility of A is higher than utility B, and if it's higher than utility C, then it's the highest utility. So then this is going to run 
And then uh, if, if the tick comes here, then you just check. This didn't hold, so A isn't the highest. So if B is higher than C, then, then B would be the highest. So then, then you run this guy, uh, and then you always run this if, if you get this far. Uh, this fixes to the conditions would, uh, would create something that runs exactly like the utility here, but now uh, this is a standard BT instead. Uh, obviously, you need to keep track of these conditions. They might look a bit odd when you come back uh, two years later to, to debug your tree and you, you don't remember what you did. Uh, okay, uh, but I guess that's the same. Uh, I mean, the utility also is a bit hard if you want to add something here. You need to really understand how the utility was computed, what kind of units you were using, and, and how big numbers you were using to make it work. So, just going back again, uh, utility BTs is kind of an extension. Uh, it makes sense in some cases. It's fairly nat it's a natural ID. The problem that, that they're trying to solve or the problem identified is that the sibling order of a behave, behave tree is important and it is fixed and sometimes you might be annoyed by this fact and then you can do utility BTs. Um, so can we change the order on the fly? Yes, it's called utility BTs. It's fairly straightforward for, for fallbacks. Sequence, sometimes you can do it and you can think about cost, you can think about time. If you have a reward, you, you can treat it as a reinforcement learning problem. Then you get the benefits, benefits of optimality, but you also get the drawback of having to do lots of computation. And just finally, we want to note that no, no animals came to harm creating this video because the dragon is actually a fake dragon. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to know more about behavior trees, check out our other videos or, or this book that is available for free on archive.